Welcome. So you've just done your training and you've learned a little bit about the refrigeration cycle. Sometimes that's called the vapour compression cycle. Um, and you've learned probably about heat loss and lots and lots and lots of things are probably inside your head at the moment. But I wanted to take you back to something very uh, important and that's heat. So as heating engineers, um, there's a great advantage to understanding heat. Now, one of the biggest things to understand about heat is it moves at different speeds. The sun is where we get our heat and light, and we all know that there's something called the speed of light. That's a constant speed. I can never remember what it is, but it's a constant speed. Heat is different. It moves at different speeds. So whenever you think of heat, just flash these images up in your head just to get the idea that they are mo that it moves at different speeds. Now, why does it move at different speeds? What's the driving force to, to create these different speeds? Well, it's all to do with the temperature difference between two points. So what are our two points? Well, in the home, we tend to heat our homes, let's say, to 21 degrees. So the difference will be what's outside. So if it's minus three outside, the difference between 21 and minus three is 24. If it was nine degrees outside, the difference between 21 and nine degrees is 12. So that difference is what drives and, and creates all these different speeds of heat. And it's the same with radiators. So that's where you're pushing heat into the home at different speeds. So the average temperature inside your radiator is somewhere between the flow temp and the return temp. That gives you sort of the average temp in your radiator. And that temperature and the room temp of 21 is what pushes the heat into the home. So if your home is actually, let's say you set your home for 18 degrees rather than 21, your radiator has become more powerful because the, the difference in temperature is greater. Now I use this to help illustrate that. So don't worry about the numbers to start with. And, and, uh, you know, I'm not very good at math, so I, can, I only know this little bit. So you know, it, it, if this video helps you, you might some of you might get this straight away, some of you might need to watch the video a couple of times. But I use this seesaw analogy. We all instinctively know what way that ball's gonna roll. We know it's gonna roll from the high end to the low end. And that's exactly what heat does. It moves from the high end to the low end, the hot temperatures to the low temperatures. So if your home's, if you've got your home inside at 21, it's gonna move outside if the temperature outside is colder. If it's a hot summer's day and the temperature outside is is hot, the heat is moving in. So heat moves from hot to cold. We can also see from this seesaw that if there's a greater difference in height, a greater difference between the high end and the low end, the ball will roll quicker. And that's the same thing with heat. It's this difference. So obviously with the seesaw, it's a difference in height. Uh, we could say delta H. You might hear this word delta. Uh, sometimes it's a little triangle. The symbol for delta is a triangle. It just means difference. And then the letter after it. So delta T, T stands for temperature. And that's what we tend to tend to use. So on the left, uh, I've got um, these things. These are the indoor temperatures. That stays the same. And obviously here we've got the outside temperature that's changing it always changes so that means the temperature difference is always changing so the speed of heat actually leaving our home is always changing and that means we should actually push heat into the home at different speeds and this is where we get this whole idea of low temp heating and low temp heating um, any home can be heated with low temperatures and we'll we'll talk about that in a minute and you know when I say any home I mean any home it's because you only have to drive heat into the home to match the speed of heat leaving the home and that's where uh, well, that's one of the, the second video we'll talk about why the condensing boiler got invented a lot of people think it was invented to sort of capture more heat that get, ends up going up the flue that's not why it was invented so we did used to do heat loss, loss calculations. Um, engineers haven't been doing them, and that's not their fault. It's because uh, you know, we had an industry that liked people to sort of put uh, boilers on the wall, and we've obviously had an ind well, the con uh, combi boiler came around. Obviously, we needed a high, powerful boiler to give you so you know the combi boiler is actually a centralised, instantaneous hot water heater. So you need a lot of power in it to sort of uh, so the hot hot taps run hot. Um, so we just tend to put these things in, and heat loss calculations uh, sort of 
started to not be used or became become so popular and obviously now with heat pumps uh, we need to be sizing the home so again don't get too bogged down with the numbers here we've got the indoor temp and again here we've got the outside temp so that's always changing the outside temps always changing which means the difference between these two temperatures is always changing which means our heat loss is always changing now when people do a heat loss calculation on a home what they're actually doing they're working out this one they're working out what how quickly will heat move through the home on the worst day of winter now we can't actually pick the worst day of winter the, the average temperature across the UK is going to be around about uh, seven to nine degrees obviously it changes depending where you are up in Scotland it's going to be a lot colder but that's the average average temperature of winter now the average coldest day of winter across the UK is minus three now again it changes so up in Scotland it's going to be around minus five in London it's about minus 1.8 but for the whole of the UK the average is minus three so what we do when we do a heat loss calculation we're actually trying to work out well how quick does heat move through this particular home when it's minus three outside which is going to be a difference of 24 you know because we generally heat homes up to 21 you know how quick is heat going to move through that home when it's minus three outside because if we know that speed that's the speed we have to push heat into the home at now lots of people get heat and temperature confused they're kind of you know they've got a massive relationship but they are two different things if you want to get into the nitty-gritty of it temperature is the zero floor thermodynamics and heat which is energy is the uh, first law of thermodynamics and if you really want to get into it second law is entropy um, so we work out how quick heat leaves the home when it's minus three okay and that that so we now know how powerful uh, our rads have to be to push it into the home at the uh, same speed it's leaving now when I say speed we're, we're all used to this thing here aren't we really kilowatts watts we're, we're used to that term now what uh, has time built into it so one watt is one joule of heat per second one joule of heat moving per second one kilowatt is one kilojoule of heat per second now you could say it another way you could say one kilowatt is 1000 joules of heat per second so when we, we talk in watts we don't tend to talk in joules per second actually if you look at some of the older boilers from the 50s their, their boiler plates did actually have uh, BTU hours and they also had this joules per second so I, I tend to use joules per second because it helps people remember that things are moving at speed you know like a car be miles per hour when you say per time unit per second we associate it with speed and I think sometimes when we use the word watts we, we, we're, we're forgetting that watts is obviously the the unit of measurement for power but it's got that seconds built into it so as you can see if we go down I like to always use this nine I should have actually colored it red so we know that across the UK it's going to be minus three is what we design temp uh, our outside design temperature so that's the difference of 24 half of 24 is 12 here we go 12 so nine degrees the difference between nine degrees outside and 21 is actually half so if it's nine degrees outside now that's pretty cold you're gonna wear your scarf your coat your hat maybe but it's half the speed of heat leaving the home is halved and what that means is we only should be pushing heat into the home at half the speed and unfortunately that's not been happening and that's what the next video is going to be talking about hope you enjoyed this